I dipped a charred piece of bread into a rich gravy that soaked each crumb like a sponge. I raised it to my mouth and closed my eyes. And that's when my journey began. See, I'm a Western chef, and I grew up in a really small town in New Hampshire. So you're probably thinking, how does this guy know anything about Indian cuisine? Well, to answer that question, I've got to take you on a journey. And I want to start in the beginning. See, I was really grateful to grow up in the culinary scene where I learned so much from incredible Western chefs. They would pass on their knowledge, and I was able to use that knowledge to gain a pretty good career. I started companies, opened restaurants, and I always loved food. Um, I think it was rooted because maybe you can relate. I kind of grew up without a dad. And my mom and I would, uh, would get together after a long day of work, and she'd be working a ton just to provide. And the first book I ever learned how to read was a cookbook. I think food for me was about survivability. And I didn't have that connection all the time with it. When I started studying Indian cuisine, it happened in a really strange sort of way. I never really romanticized the, the, the food, and to be honest, I was a really picky eater. But my journey began in a very small store in the United States. A friend of mine needed to buy some spices, and he dragged me along for the ride. The store is located in a very small strip mall, and it was surrounded by all these independent restaurants that we labeled ethnic. I walked into the shop on a cold fall day, and from the moment the door opened, this wave of scent hit me. These spices I didn't know the names for were permeating in the air. I walked to the back of the store, and a small little lady greeted me with a smile. The smell of incense and toasted jira and cumin was intoxicating, and the smile kind of crept over my face as I walked over to greet her. At the back of the store, she sat there smiling, stirring a pot of vegetables. My friend approached, had a conversation in Hindi, and I gazed around in wonderment at just the number of items that were in this store. Snacks like jivara and kaju pistu and gulab jamun, like all these things I didn't know just existed like this strange world I've never been a part of. So the short little lady in an apron smiled and she must have seen me look like a deer in the headlights, and she said, Hey, do you want to try something? And I didn't want to be disrespectful, so I agreed. And she went to the back of the kitchen and put some food in a little styrofoam container and handed me a plastic spoon. She smiled and said, This is called Indian breakfast. The container was basically just vegetables and something I didn't know at the time that we call suji now, subji. And so... I dug the spoon in, and it was the same moment. I closed my eyes and took that bite, and all of a sudden, this unapologetic scream of flavor happened in my mouth. This balance of spicy and sour and sweet, known as chatpata. It happened. It happened again. And I thought, this is incredible. This is delicious. She asked me what my name was, and I said, my name is Keith. And she said, my name is Indra. Welcome. See, this moment changed the entire course of my life. This began a friendship that would completely revolutionize the way that I cooked, the way that I thought, and most of all, the people that I met in my world. Indra helped me discover my passion for Indian cuisine and culture. Over the coming years, we would do incredible events together as she would cater. Um, we would get to cook together. And most of all, we started learning about each other. I wanted to impress her, so I started learning spice names in Hindi. I would, you know, things were turmeric in the beginning, became haldi, and cumin became jira. I, I wanted her to know that I was serious about this, and I always asked her, let me cook. She said no. This went on for six months of me badgering her, time in and time out. Let me cook, let me cook, I know what I'm doing. She goes, you know how to cook Western food. So her family was Gujarati. And from a very young age, she was taught to share her love and passion for food, but she also shared it with her customers. See, if you went to Indira's grocery store, you were in for a real treat. She would make lunch once a day, you didn't get to choose what you were having, and it was always vegetarian. A lot of times it was a dal and a simple humble bindi. 
these things, when I would eat them, would evoke this response that I never had in Western food. I didn't understand how you were getting so much flavor and so much love. It wasn't refined, it was humble. I think that's where it all changed for me. See, Indra taught me so much in this time, but it wasn't easy. Again, I would ask her, teach me to cook, teach me to cook. So one day her website went down and she needed some help. So I agreed, but on the caveat that she teaches me how to cook some things. So I remember like it was yesterday walking into Indra's restaurant, getting to, to do cooking classes and cooking with her. It was this, this amazing moment. I'm used to measuring things in the West, right? We're precise in a lot of the things that we do when we're training as, as chefs. And I would say, how much, you know, how much cumin do you add? And she goes, enough. But like, what is enough, right? I didn't realize that these were cultural norms. You're not taught one tablespoon of this. You're taught these finger movements. How much? Enough. These are things that I didn't pick up on at the time. But her, every time I would go there, I left inspired and excited to learn more. I remember so many times I would have a bad day and I would just go eat lunch. There was one seat at the front of the store and this little plastic chair that you could sit down. And that's what I would do. I brought people I loved to this place and my family and my mom got to meet Indra as well and they became pretty close. I think walking into the kitchen always evokes these memories for me. The, the chants of prayers, morning pujas happening, the iconic moments of the incense wafting over me. These are things that now I get to do at Atma, which is our pop-up, but more on that later. As Western chefs, we're always taught to eat with our eyes first, right? Presentation matters to us. And as we learn new recipes, we always search to discover flavors and techniques in which we can elevate the diner's experience. And over the years, I would make this doll and, and I would bring things to her and say, taste this. And she'd go, oh, it's okay. It's missing something. She would never tell me what it was. But years later, I kind of realized it was missing. It was missing Atma. It was missing the soul. To define the soul of a cuisine, you have to understand the people. As a chef, I can't just learn a recipe from an incredible auntie and expect to replicate that the way she did. Indian food is much different. I remember the moment that I finally got to cater with Indra and I got a call from her and she asked me to come to the shop and she said, Hey, I'm doing a wedding and the, the party wants chicken tandoori. And because of her beliefs and her religion, she couldn't cook chicken. So she asked me if I would cook it. At this point in my career, I've cooked for a lot of people, but I don't think I've ever been more afraid. I remember pouring over details with her of how we're going to cook, how like I'm going to cook this. Like I'm scared that I'm going to mess up the most important day in these people's lives. And she would smile and say, you know how to do this. You know how to do this. I remember arriving at the wedding and setting up for a long day that was ahead of us. And dish after dish was brought out to the, to the bride and the groom. And at the end of the night, Indra went out to greet them. They all clapped and, they came over to her and they said, hey, the chicken tandoori was so good. And she smiled and said, the white guy made it. It's kind of the moment that you know that you're finally on the right track. See, culture and history aren't taught in tandem with technique and recipes like, you know, in the West. We don't get that. We get technique, we get recipes, but culture is kind of lacking. Because of that, we're not connected to the food the way many other parts of the world are. And after countless hours of reading books, getting kicked out of Indra's kitchen, learning Indian history, studying, studying with my gurus, Ragni Kashyap and Kurush Dalal, and studying Hindi and feeling like an idiot, I've concluded that Indian food can't be separated from the culture. It's kneaded into the nans and soaked into the dals that you guys cook. And that was the very thing my, my food was missing. I knew how to cook, but I didn't have Atma. Years later, Indra sold the store and she retired, but her food lives on every time I grind a spice. 
<laughs> she welcomed this Westerner, this guy that just walked into her store one day and treated him with kindness and respect. She taught me so much about myself and really what I was missing as a chef. She comforted me when my mom passed away and instilled this passion and respect that still burns to this day. You know, to become a chef, you, you learn to cook from recipes and schools and videos and all of these things, but you can learn technique and you can learn flavors, but you can't be taught how to cook from your soul. To cook from your soul, you have to discover who you are as a person. And for so many years, I didn't have that. It's cool to look back on it now, and I'm so grateful for Indra. I'm so grateful for all the people who have supported me in this journey. And that's what this channel is about. We, we're going to deep dive into the food, the culture, the history of the Indian subcontinent, and how it means to connect. Not just connect, but how to cook from your soul. Atma means the truest expression of oneself, and that's what you're going to get the truest expression of myself in this channel. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, thanks for listening. And that's my journey.